the cash flows module, found within the retirement section of each and every client plan, pulls back the curtain on exactly what's happening on an annual basis within a client's future-looking retirement projections. Here, you can dive deeper into a client's cash inflows and outflows, assets and liabilities, investment portfolio, and more. In this training video, we'll start with a general overview of the cash flows, followed by a detailed review of each subtab. We'll then touch on some pro tips and best practices to be mindful of when utilizing the cash flows. Lastly, we'll wrap things up by reviewing a number of important plan settings that will have an impact on the cash flow projections. The cash flows in Right Capital break down all of the details within a client's retirement projections on an annual basis. Each row reflects a full 12 months of activity and is marked by the calendar year and each client's age at the end of the 12 month period. In terms of general navigation, you can use the drop down menu in the upper right to toggle between the cash flow tables for the current plan, the proposed plan, or any additional plans that you've created in the retirement analysis section. You can also click into columns that have underlined headers to zoom into that column and view more detailed information. It's also worth mentioning that the cash flows module uses a straight line, linear growth projection for asset returns without any randomized market volatility. For this reason, you will see differences in ending assets when compared to the Monte Carlo simulation in the retirement analysis module. The first subtab we'll be reviewing today is the summary tab which details a client's yearly cash inflows and cash outflows. All of the values listed here are based on the income, expenses, goals, and savings that are entered into the profile section of the client plan. If you're viewing a proposal, any changes you've made to these variables in the retirement analysis area will be factored into the projections. From left to right, you'll find the client's cash inflows, cash outflows, and net flows for each year. Cash inflows are comprised of income inflows like salaries and social security benefits, planned distributions, which includes RMDs and distributions from other investments, and other inflows, which will include things like asset sales and insurance death benefit payouts. The cash outflow section will be comprised of expenses, goals, taxes, and savings. The expenses column will encompass general living expenses in addition to things like housing costs, debt payments, healthcare costs, and insurance premiums. Goals can reflect any number of financial goals that are entered into the goals area of the profile, such as college goals, vacation goals, property purchase goals, and more. Tax payment reflects the combined total of federal, state, and FICA taxes for each year and planned savings reflects any contributions that clients are making to their various investments. At the end of each projection year, you'll find the net flows column. A positive number indicates a cash flow surplus that is being saved and reinvested into the client's taxable investments. A negative number indicates a cash flow deficit, which is funded by dipping into a client's assets according to your specified withdrawal sequence. If you're using a modified cash flow based planning method, you'll also see a spend unsaved cash flows column. This represents any cash flow surplus that is being spent off at the end of each year rather than being saved and reinvested. Both the planning method and withdrawal sequence settings can be found and adjusted in the gear icon, settings, methodology tab of each client plan. We'll review both of these settings more thoroughly in just a bit. Next up, we're going to quickly backtrack and take a look at the Cash Flow Maps tab. This area provides simple, intuitive visuals to help clients better understand their cash inflows and cash outflows each year. The values displayed here are identical to those found in the Summary tab, but for clients who may have difficulty reading and understanding a more traditional cash flow table, maps can be a useful visual aid in demonstrating where their money is coming from and where it's going each year. Unlike the summary table, MAPS focuses in on one cash flow year at a time. You can use the timeline above the chart to select a specific calendar year or client age to zero in on. 
The first cash flow map is the waterfall. This is a Sankey style flowchart displaying the total inflows and outflows for each year. Each inflow and outflow is proportional in size to the dollar value of that item to help clients visualize the magnitude of each item's impact. You can identify any cash flow deficits or cash flow surplus at the bottom of the chart. The second cash flow map is the breakdown. You can switch from the waterfall to the breakdown by clicking the toggle arrow next to the name of the chart. The breakdown highlights the same values and information as the waterfall, using a chart layout that's more in line with the other visuals in Right Capital. This chart combines visual simplicity with dynamic granularity, allowing you to click into the individual tiles to zoom in for more detailed cash flow information. The next tab that we'll be looking at is the Net Worth tab, which is where you can see the various assets and liabilities that make up the client's overall net worth. Non-qualified assets reflects all taxable investments, including bank accounts, while qualified assets reflects all tax-deferred and tax-free investments. You can also track end-of-year balances for all of a client's assets, including properties, businesses, trusts, and lifestyle assets. Mortgages and other loan balances can also be tracked here as they're paid down over the course of the plan. To the far right, you'll find the client's overall net worth at the end of each year throughout the duration of the client plan. As a reminder, you can toggle between your current and proposed plans in the upper right to clearly see the impact of your proposed changes on a client's net worth. The Invested Asset tab of the Cash Flows focuses in on the client's investment portfolio, highlighting how a client's assets might grow or decline each year. Here, you'll find the client's beginning of year and end of year invested asset balances, planned savings, planned distributions, and net cash flows, which will mirror the values shown for these same columns in the Summary tab, employer matches and other investment contributions coming in from outside of the client plan, and last, the annual portfolio return being generated by the client's investments each year. It's worth noting that the portfolio return is automatically calculated based on the way a client's investments are allocated in the net worth section of their profile in tandem with your advisor-specific return assumptions for each asset class. One final note on the Invested Asset tab. Unlike the net worth, this table does not include property value, mortgages, or other assets and loans. You'll only see the value of properties, businesses, and lifestyle assets reflected here if they're sold off prior to the end of the plan and the proceeds are reinvested. While the Invested Asset tab focuses on a client's big picture investment portfolio, the Accounts tab allows you to see more specific details for each type of account within the plan. Using the drop down menu at the top of the chart, you can choose between viewing five different cash flow tables. The Ending Account Balance table illustrates end of year balances for each account bucket in the plan, separated by account type as well as by owner. Addition to Accounts displays the combined total of employee and employer contributions to each type of account throughout the projections. Required minimum distribution reflects the required distribution of assets from tax-deferred accounts when the client reaches RMD age. Withdrawal from accounts reflects all withdrawals other than RMDs throughout the plan. And lastly, net cash flows reflects the total of additions, RMDs, and withdrawals for each account type. There is one additional cash flow tab that we'll be looking at today, which is the Options tab. This tab will only appear when there is a stock plan entered within the Profile Net Worth section of the Financial Plan. This cash flow table will highlight the details of a client's stock grants as they're projected out into the future. You'll be able to identify when shares vest and exercise, when shares are sold or held within the plan, sale proceeds, and taxation for each year. Now that we've covered all of the cash flow subtabs, let's discuss some pro tips and best practices related to the cash flows. Firstly, 
be aware of the rows per page menu in the lower right hand corner. If you'd prefer to limit the number of rows that are displayed on screen at once, you can choose to do so using this menu. This can be helpful if you need to isolate a specific period of time, or if you want to reduce visual clutter during a client presentation. Next, I want to draw attention to the blue download button in the upper right corner. You can click this button at any time to download the cache flows as a CSV file. This will allow you to then open that cache flow table in Microsoft Excel or any other spreadsheet software you may use. When you click this button, it will download whatever table you're currently viewing, even if you're drilling down into specific columns in a given subtab. Lastly, I want to mention that you can choose to implement custom return scenarios within the cash flows in Write Capital. As I mentioned, the cash flows feature a linear growth projection by default, but by using custom return scenarios, you can inject volatility into the cash flows in the form of a specific, predetermined sequence of asset returns. To turn this feature on, navigate to the gear icon, Settings, Methodology tab, scroll down to the bottom of the page, and check the box labeled Allow Display of Scenario Specific Cash Flows. With this setting checked, you'll find a new drop down menu back in the Cash Flows area that allows you to choose between your available return scenarios. For more information on return scenarios, you can search for return scenarios within the Right Capital Help Center. You can also find our dedicated return scenarios training video linked in the YouTube description below. Let's segue into the last section of this video, which is plan settings that impact the cash flow projections. In addition to implementing return scenarios within the cash flows, there are a number of other settings that you'll want to be aware of within the gear icon, settings, methodology tab. The first setting is the planning method, which we touched on briefly near the top of this video. The planning method setting determines whether excess cash flows will be automatically saved or spent off within the plan each year. The cash flow based option will automatically save and reinvest any cash flow surplus into the client's taxable investments. The modified cash flow based planning method operates on the assumption that any cash flow surplus will be spent unless otherwise indicated within the plan. Lastly, the goal based planning method will function differently than the cash flow options. This method will ignore income and expenses within the plan, instead, looking only to goals savings and account information to sketch up a rough picture of retirement. When using this option, the maps, summary, and invested asset tabs will be hidden, leaving only the net worth and accounts tabs in the cash flows module. The other setting that we touched on earlier is the withdrawal sequence setting, which you can find listed right below the planning method. This setting reflects the order of accounts that will be withdrawn from whenever cash flow deficits occur within the cash flow projections. The default option in Right Capital is taxable investments first, tax deferred assets second, and tax free assets last. But you can choose from any of the options listed here, depending on what you'd like to see. Another important setting is the cash flow and simulation start setting, which determines the start date of the cash flow projections. You can choose between starting the projections at the beginning of the current calendar year, the beginning of the next calendar year, or the current month. You can click on the Help Center link below this setting for more specific details and common use cases for each option. While the three settings we just reviewed will have the biggest direct impact on the cash flows, most of the settings on this page will impact the cash flow projections in other ways. Understanding the impact of each methodology setting is crucial to building a robust financial plan. So if you're unfamiliar with the settings on this page, we recommend searching for methodology in our help center. As always, if you have any additional questions about the cash flows, client settings, or anything else in Right Capital, our advisor support team is available to help as well. You can reach out to them using the in-app chat feature in the lower right corner of your screen, or by giving them a call at 888-982-9596, option 2. Thanks for watching and take care.